Hello everyone and welcome to the online worship service of Epworth United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Jennifer Bass and it's wonderful to be in worship with you all today. Friends, today is February 11th and I cannot believe that it is already at the end of our sermon series called Standing on the Promises in 2024. We will end our sermon series today and uh, on Wednesday, it will be Ash Wednesday. So I hope that you will join us on Wednesday uh, for an Ash Wednesday worship service. We will have that available for you at noon. And, um, and it will be a wonderful time of worship as we begin the season of Lent and we begin to prepare our hearts for Easter already. Hard to believe, uh, but truly, it is a wonderful day to be in worship with you. So I invite you to take a moment and light a candle as a symbol that God is with us as we worship together. And today, let's join together in a unison prayer to open our service. Gracious God, help us to be still. Help us get off the treadmill of worry, busyness, confusion, and fear quiet our hearts. Like the psalmist in Psalm 46, we want to be still and know that you are God. Fill us with peace and calm assurance today. As we enter into worship, fill this place with your presence and give us your Holy Spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's sing together. Our scripture lesson for today comes to us from the book of Psalms, chapter 46. I invite you to hear these words. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still 
and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of God for all of God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's take a few moments and let's pray together today. Gracious God, we thank you so much for these reminders from Scripture that you are powerful, you are present with us, you pour out your provision into our lives, and when we feel like times are turbulent and our circumstances are not ideal, God, we can be still in your presence. In fact, you would just have us know that you are God. God, thank you for this timely reminder. Lord, for the people in our lives who need your healing touch, God, we ask that you would pour out your healing and your strengthening for the places in the world that need your peace. God, pour out peace. God, for the situations that need your intervention. God, we ask that you would powerfully intervene. In fact, Lord, we stand on the promises that you assure us in Psalm 46. And we ask that you would be the powerful and present God that you promise to be. Thank you so much for loving us and caring for us. Thank you for being faithful in every season and every situation. God, we pray all of these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you're a longtime Methodist, you've probably heard of circuit riders. Circuit riders were old-fashioned preachers in the 1700s and 1800s who would ride on horseback from community to community, going from church to church to hold worship services and officiate at baptisms and, and serve communion. There were more churches than there were ordained preachers back in the day, and so an ordained pastor would ride a circuit, would travel on horseback from congregation to congregation. That's actually where we get the foundations of our appointive system in the United Methodist Church today, where our denomination still sends and appoints pastors to churches and communities. And once in a while, a church will be appointed a new pastor. One circuit rider was out riding one afternoon, and he came upon a man working in a field. Thinking to start a conversation and invite the man to church, the preacher called out, Hello, sir. Fine day, isn't it? Fine for you, perhaps, the man replied. All you have to do is ride around on that horse thinking about God. I have to sweat here in this field and then walk all the way home afterward. I don't think it's right that you should have things so easy while I have to work so hard. The preacher responded, You're right. You do work hard in the field, and I admire that, but you need to realize that the kind of work I do is hard work of a different kind. Sure, the man responded, but it's not really work. All you do is ride around thinking about God. That's not very hard. It's actually harder than you think, the pastor replied. I'll tell you what, if you can think about God and nothing else for one full minute, I'll give you my horse. That sounds like a deal, said the man, and he immediately sat down in silence. Five seconds went by, then ten seconds. Suddenly the farmer looked at the minister and said, Does that include the saddle? 
the pastor said, oh, <laughs> all the man had to do was think about God and nothing else, but it was not so easy a task. If you have been tuning into our online services since about mid-January, you know that we've been working through a sermon series called Standing on the Promises. We have been examining some of God's most beautiful promises to us in the scriptures. Promises like God's grace is sufficient for you and his power is made perfect in your weakness. Promises like be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Promises like do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze because you are precious and honored in my sight and because I love you. Promises like, if his eye is on the sparrow, then we can know his eye is on us too. That's actually a hymn lyric, but we glean those words from Matthew chapters 6 and chapter 10. A week at a time, we have examined some of these wonderful promises from God who loves us so much. Promises that we can anchor ourselves to today and throughout this entire year and all the days of our lives. We could spend years examining all of the promises that God gives us in the scriptures. But today, we wrap up this brief sermon series with Psalm 46, where God's word promises us, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This is such a beautiful, powerful scripture passage. There are verses here in Psalm 46 that you could write down on an index card and tape to your bathroom mirror so that you could see them every single day. There are verses here that you could highlight in your Bible so that you can remember them always. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. And God says to us, be still and know that I am God. In times of trouble, when things feel like they are falling apart, when nothing seems to be going like we had expected, God promises that he is the safe place that we should run to, that he will be the source of everything we need to get through it. And then he tells us to be still and know that he is God, to just be quiet in his presence and know that he's God, that he'll bring glory to himself when he brings a solution to our troubles. God doesn't need us to jump in ahead of him to try and fix the situation ourselves. God doesn't need hundreds of our best human ideas on how to manage and solve all our own problems. God doesn't need us to wring our hands in anxiety or to get stirred up in a million activities to try to handle everything as if it all depends on us. God promises us that we can be still and know. We can get quiet in his presence. We can still our hearts and our minds and our hands. And we can focus on the fact that he is God and on the fact that he promises he will be glorified in our lives and in our circumstances. But just like the farmer in my opening illustration, there are a lot of people who have a hard time being still and knowing that God is God, even for one full minute. And if I'm honest with you today, sometimes when I'm in the midst of times of trouble, I'm one of those people who has a hard time being still and being quiet. Ask me about the squawk I made the other day when I got home after the longest day during a challenging week and the storm door handle popped off in my hand when I reached to try to go into my house the church parsonage. The, the door handle popped off in my hand and I went, what? <laughs> and 
and I texted a picture of the door handle broken off in my hand to Aaron, our building superintendent, along with the words, why, Lord, why? <laughs> I've heard it said that nature abhors a vacuum. Have you ever heard that saying? Nature abhors a vacuum. Abhors means hate. Nature hates a vacuum. The saying means that there's not very much in nature that is perfectly still and completely empty and quiet. Nearly everything in nature is filled with something. It wants to be filled with something, even if it's filled with particles and sounds that are invisible to our human senses. It's hard for us, at least hard for many of us in our natural state, to be still and to know that God is God. It's hard for many of us to be naturally quiet and to focus on God. Many of us want to fill the air with talk and activity. For a lot of us, it's extremely hard for us to become quiet and prayerful in our minds and hearts. Our minds and hearts just naturally want to run and run and run. They want to swirl and swirl with thoughts and worries and do-it-yourself solutions. Lots of people, maybe most people, struggle with being still and knowing God. My cousin Danny is an oncologist in Virginia, and he said that during his residency, a discussion leader asked his group a question. The discussion leader said, um, the discussion leader asked a question that the group could not answer. And, and then the leader waited and waited and waited. And Danny said that, that no one said anything. The discussion leader didn't offer a single word. He just, he just waited some more. Danny said the silence stretched on and on, and the leader let it go for several minutes. Finally, one of Danny's colleagues offered an answer that was incorrect, but that sparked a lively conversation. Later, Danny asked the discussion leader how he had remained so calm and quiet for five minutes when no one had responded. The doctor laughed and replied that the silence had actually only lasted for about 45 seconds. Wow, Danny said, that felt like an eternity to me. Being still makes many people feel really uncomfortable. Many people abhor, they hate silence. They'll do just about anything to fill the emptiness because too much quiet is unsettling to them. They'll sit down in the driver's seat of their car, start the engine, and immediately turn on the car radio. They'll walk in the door of their home and immediately turn on the TV, or they'll turn on the TV first thing in the morning and let it play all day long. Some people even sleep with the TV on. And listen, I'm not, I'm not making any judgments. I'm just, I'm just saying more and more people nowadays are constantly connected to their cell phones. And I feel like my cell phone has become an extension of my own body. Last summer, I nearly had a cyclist pull out in front of my car on a bicycle because he was looking down at his cell phone while riding his bike. And he veered right out into traffic. Noise and activity and distraction just seem to bombard us everywhere we go. In stores, in restaurants, in our cars, in our hospital rooms, in our homes. We human beings often fill every waking moment with noise and activity like we can't stand to be around silence, like we can't stand to sit still, like resting in the quiet and and taking a nap in a beam of sunshine is a luxury that only our pets get to enjoy. And then, when times of trouble are happening, we're liable to think of a dozen different options for help, a dozen different options for refuge and strength before we ever think of running to God and being still in God's presence to know that God is God and God will handle it. And soon enough, our solutions don't work. We're discouraged, we're frustrated, we're angry, we're heartsick, 
we're exhausted, we don't find the peace we're looking for, and we're wrung out from our worries and our stresses. And maybe honestly, I'm just preaching to myself today, and you get to listen in. Here in Psalm 46, God promises that He is our refuge and our strength, that He is always present, ever present to help us in times of trouble. Even when it feels like what's happening in our circumstances is that the very earth is giving way around us and the mountains are falling into the heart of the sea, when it feels like the world is on fire, God instructs us, we can be still. We can be still and know that He is God. God says, that our first instinct, when things begin to go bonkers, when life begins to go sideways, our first instinct can be to run to God as a refuge and our strength. Our first instinct in times of trouble can be to seek God's presence and to seek God's face. God can be our first option instead of our last resort. And we can be still in God's presence, we can curl into God's side. We don't have to figure it all out ourselves. His promise is that He is God. He will be exalted in our lives. And in the midst of every last one of our circumstances, He will be exalted among the nations. He will be exalted in the earth. That's what Psalm 46 says. I know I just mentioned this scripture verse last week, but it's really been echoing in my heart. Let me remind you that Psalm 37, 25 says, I was young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Friends, God does not fail God's people. You will never fall out of God's hands. God's solutions to our troubles will always be perfect, timely, and effective. And if we will be still and long and still long enough in God's presence, God's promise is that we will see God work in our situation for God's glory. It's actually a relief, isn't it, to realize that God doesn't need us to come up with a thousand ideas of what we should do next or how we should fix it all. We don't need to live with the stress on our shoulders that it all depends on us. God doesn't need us to chase down a thousand rabbit trails that lead to nowhere. God doesn't want to watch us spin our wheels. God already has a perfect, timely, effective solution in mind for us. God is opening God's arms to us and offering shelter and refuge and sanctuary. The question is, can we be still? Can we spend time with God like that? Can we spend intentional time in God's presence, in praise and worship, in prayer, just being with God, knowing that God is God and waiting on God's timing? Can we restrain ourselves from filling the air with a bunch of human noise? Can we resist the temptation to get in there and try to fix everything ourselves as if every last thing depends on us? Can we turn to God first instead of last? Can you imagine what it must be like for God when one of God's beloved children just wants to be with God? In God's presence. You might know this verse, Isaiah 40, 31. It reminds us, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Friends, here are some promises we can stand on in 2024. So let's anchor ourselves to faith in God. Let's be still and know that God is God. Let's run to God as our refuge and our ever-present help in times of trouble. God will be exalted 
among the nations, and God will be exalted in the earth. Amen. Our closing hymn as we close our service today is, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Let's praise God together. And now receive this blessing. As you go this week, may God be your ever-present help. May you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, experience God's peace and God's deep assurance that He is with you, that He is providing you strength. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go in peace.